we are talking about the Day of Atonement. We were, uh, excuse me, Feast of Trumpets. We haven't quite got to the Feast of, Ato of Atonement yet. And in the last couple weeks, we talked about these feasts and how they're relative to us. That these aren't Jewish feasts. These are feasts of the Lord. And the Lord is inviting every one of us to come and dine. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're allowed to shout in here. Amen. So God has got these great holidays. He's got these high feasts. And he invites us to come. Now God works everything in patterns. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we see everything that he's done so far. We've seen that how they all pertain in agriculture. The first three feasts that Jesus fulfilled. Now remember, Jesus fulfilled them, right? And he fulfilled them in a particular order. He just didn't start with one, jump to the last one, then come back to the fourth one, then decide to do the second one. He went right in order. Do you see this? This is critical to understand. He died on Passover, the very first one. He was in the grave during unleavened bread. They all represent something, right? You were saved. You were saved at Passover. Unleavened bread, getting the sin out. We've been sanctified by the unleavened bread. And the first fruit is our resurrection, right? He rose from the dead. He's the first one from the grave. We're the second, the third, or whatever number I'm going to be, right? So that shows our, uh, his death, burial, and resurrection is the same for us. Why does that matter? Because he's fulfilling prophecy. He's fulfilling prophecy. So then, but this first three are all centered around that agricultural part called uh, barley harvest. Fifty days later, the wheat's getting dry, right? And now we got to uh, have a, that Pentecost or Shavuot is in early summer, right? And the wheat's taken off, so... We have the barley harvest, we have the wheat harvest, and now the fall months come. So Pentecost represents the Holy Ghost given to us, right? So now we get to the end. Now this is where trumpets. Now there's three more feasts to go, right? There's seven all together, seven major feasts. There's more than that, but there's seven major feasts. So the last three is called the ingathering. Well, what are you gathering in? Well, the grain's already been harvested. Now we're going to gather the precious fruit, right? It's the fruit gathering. But it's different. It's different, right? This is all, remember the natural teaches us something of the spiritual. The spiritual teaches us something of the prophet, uh, uh, of, of prophecy, right? So when trumpets happens, it happens on the new moon, Remember? The new moon, we talked about that. That's all dark, you can't see, and you got to have two witnesses sitting here, sitting there looking. And not today, I don't think. It's not today. We'll look tomorrow, keep looking. And finally, they see a little sliver, right? They see a sliver. The Jews call it a sliver. You know what the Greeks call it? The Greeks call it a sickle. Why? Harvest time, right? It's harvest time. We can start bringing it in. So when you see the sickle, it's, we think in harvest. Because the earth is God's harvest field, right? Jesus said 2,000 years ago, they're white to harvest. Now we see the sickle. So it's time to be aware. It's time to be aware. It's time to be ready. You don't have to tell a farmer to get ready. They want to fill them grain bins way before harvest comes. They're working on that combine. They're getting those wagons ready. They're checking those tire pressures. They're doing everything like that because things only break when you use them. Amen? They don't break in the barn. They break when you use them. 
So they're getting everything ready. They're greasing everything. They're getting ready for harvest time because they don't want anything to go wrong. Well, the spiritual side of that is, if I know God's return is coming soon, I better be working on the machine, right? I better be working on me. This is where we look on the inside. Remember this, this whole feast. Those seven feasts is seven sides, right? I'm made of seven sides, my front, my back, two, side to side, another two, bottom, top, that's six. But the seventh is the inside. The seventh is the inside, just like those farmers. They go on the inside and they grease all those bearings, right? They do all this work because they don't want it to fail. I don't want you to fail. I want you to be ready when God calls the sound, that, that trumpet sound. Amen? So we see this, the next prophetic event to happen is going to be rapture of the church, right? I mean, there, there are some other things that had to happen. We've seen that Israel had to become a nation. Well, it's already did that, right? And now we, we talked about that last couple of weeks. You know, he cursed the fig tree before he died. And now he said, now here's the parable of the fig tree. Well, it came back to life. The fig tree is Israel. It was destroyed in 70 A.D. It came back to life in 1948. And when you see it's blooming, I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. Now we see the deserts blooming. We see them becoming a, a very, very strong military, military. And so we see all the things of Israel being fulfilled. People have come back from all the... Uh, around the earth, uh, the earth, have came back to Israel. So we know the signs are near. Now, I want you to see the patterns of God. Like I said, He does things, everything in its order. He didn't die on Pentecost and then rise again on tabernacles and then be in the grave during Passover. He didn't do that. He had to go by pattern. We were talking a little bit about this on Sunday school. And I, I used Jimmy here because he was, he was in special forces. I didn't know if you guys knew that. He was in special forces. And I was in the Air Force because Air Force people are smart enough. You don't jump out of perfectly good planes. You don't do that. You send the army to do that. And we'll go up to the door and say, you, you, you want me to do what? <laughs> That's what an Air Force guy, you want me to do what? And, uh, now an Army guy, they see a green light and they jump out the door. So he doesn't take his parachute, throw it out the door, and then jump after it. He don't do that. Well, he might do it once. <laughs> That's it. There's a pattern he, they got to do if you're going to be an Airborne, Right? You got to put your gear on. You got to get your pack on. You got to put all this on. You got to be strapped in. Then you see the red light. Stand up. Everybody stands up. Everybody hooks their ripcord up to the cable. And you stand up there. And the first guy, check. Here's good. Second's good. Third, good. Fourth, good. Fourth, good. Light turns red. And Jimmy jumps out a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> right? So he's got to do everything in pattern. <laughs> It's going to have flashbacks here. <laughs> so, so just like that, and in anything else, we do things in its order. God ain't no different. Amen? We are made in His image. God is the God of order. That's why He jumps out of an airplane in its proper order. Because then you can land safely on the ground. Right? Is when we do everything that, that, that's wrong, where you hear that thump, and that's it, right? So we got to do everything in order. God is no different. Now think about that when we're looking at prophecy, when we're looking at the events of Christ. He died, he buried, and he rose again, the first three. He ascended into heaven on Pentecost, and his return is going to be... When that sickle shows up, when that sickle shows up in the sky, because he said there's going to be signs in the skies, right? Sun, moon, stars. There's going to have to be signs, and then harvest is near. Remember this. This will be the season. I believe it with all my heart. He can come anytime he wants, right? 
But if God is a God of pattern, and so far we've seen everything done according to His feasts that He declared, right? Because when you look at, in the book of Genesis, and on day four, He made the sun and the moon and stars. He said, these are going to be for signs, for seasons, that word seasons means modium, and it means appointed times. It means appointed time. We think the winter, spring, summer, fall, right? That's what we're thinking. But in the Hebrew, it means appointed times. God has an appointed time. His son was going to come, when he was going to die, when he was going to rise again, and when he's coming back. Amen. When he's coming back. And it's all in the, the, the only the Father knows. We talked about the Jewish marriage. We talked about all these things because only Daddy knows. But when Daddy says, go get her, she better be ready. Amen? Amen. She better be ready. So, today we're going to start in Isaiah 54. Last week we talked about how there was, there was a king that had a wedding for a son. Remember? And he had this great big wedding and he bid all his friends to come. And his friends said, no, we're, we're too busy, don't want to come. Go to the highways and the byways, call them in. So they called them all in and they came. And then next thing you know, there's two people that didn't have on a wedding garment. Remember, this is where we left off last week. They didn't have on a wedding garment. See, Dad had to provide garments for everybody. We're clothed by God, right? We are clothed by God. His righteousness is what covers me. It is never my righteousness. It is always His righteousness that covers me. I'm not good enough. To be honest with you, I'm not good. I'm not good. Pastor John's not good. No, he's not. There is none good. <laughs> Romans tells us, no, not one. Not one. So that includes me. Now, I might be a really nice guy, but when you compare my righteousness to the righteousness of God... That's when I look like a filthy rag. Amen? That's when I look like a filthy rag. So once I have a covenant with God, just like that marriage vow between man and woman, when I ask God, come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior, forgive me of my sins, cleanse me from all my unrighteousness, I will serve you, Lord, I will serve you, Father God. And He comes into my heart. And he writes my name in his book of life. Amen. Woo! Y'all got your names written in God's book of life. That's something to shout about. And, and he comes in and he makes residence in my heart. And he rules and reigns here. You know, no one has to tell me to go to church in the morning. Every Sunday, every Thursday, no one has to tell me I want to be here. Why? Because I know God's going to show up. I want to be there. I want to be with the family of God. I want to be there. I want to be there. Amen. Amen? I want to be there. So, that's the proof of what's living here. God made resident in my heart. Okay? So, my righteousness now that, I, that, that is covering me isn't my own words. Right? You are saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. No one's going to say, I made it my way. You'll never sing that, hear them singing that in heaven. I did it my way. Never going to hear it. Right? You might hear it on earth, but you won't hear it in heaven. Right? We are saved by God's grace. And that is it. So my covering is his righteousness. So when we seen that parable last week of these two men sitting in this king, and the king walks up and says, friend, where's your garments? And they were speechless, for they had none. He said, cast them out into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of trees. 
Get him out of here. Get him out of here. They didn't come by my son. They didn't come get here. They're not covered by the blood, right? Now let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah's got some things he wants to say about this. Isaiah 54, 17, we quote this half of it a lot. When people come up and want prayer for it, Oh, brother, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Woo, in Jesus' name. And we get all excited and start speaking in tongues or whatever we do because, but we, we, we stop there. We stop there. We don't finish the scripture. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. You're dying of cancer. No, I'm not. I'm purchased by, I've been healed. Amen. I've been healed. See, the word says something different than what the world's saying. You've been healed. You've been healed. I'm telling you, brother, you've been healed. I felt the virtue go out yesterday. I felt it. Okay? This is Isaiah 54, 17. This is the heritage of the servants of God. This is your heritage. This is your rights. Right? This is the children's bread. This is where you eat. Right? Now look at the last sentence. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So my, my righteousness, my righteousness is His righteousness covering me. Do you see that? Flip over a few pages. I was just going to read part of this, but I'm going to read all of it. This is the Advents of the Messiah. This is Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Woo! This is what John the Baptist was saying. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek, and hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to pro proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. Jesus said the same, quoted the same scripture. John's going to go up and start and finish the, another scripture. It says, um, as a reed shaking, I'm come, right? I'm come. Jesus came and sat, said this, and then sat down and taught them. To proclaim, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Uh-oh, he's coming back. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we don't want to be there for that. It's a day of vengeance, right? But let me tell you something about our God. He doesn't beat his bride. Amen? There should be shouting there. He doesn't beat his bride. You're his love. You're his heart. He doesn't beat his wife. He's going to carry her away before the wrath comes down. Okay? He's going to carry her away. So the day of vengeance of our Lord, and to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Now think about your resurrected body. Right? So we're going to die, and dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. But he's going to make something beautiful out of the dirt. Amen? Amen. He's going to make something beautiful out of the dirt. The oil of joy of mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Remember the song? He gave them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. We used to sing that all the time. As for you, Brad. <laughs> and they shall build up the old waste places. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities. 
the desolations of many generations. He's talking about his return, because there's going to be a lot of cities that are going to be destroyed, right? And the stranger shall stand and feed their flocks. The sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. <clears throat> but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. That's what you are. That's what you are going to be called. Okay? Men shall call you ministers of our God. And you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you shall boast yourselves. For your shame shall have been doubled. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I the Lord love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. And their offsprings among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the seed of the Lord hath blessed. Now look at this. And I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. Woo! Isn't that good? He's clothed me. So when you see last week when those two guys come in, they didn't have no garments, they didn't have no salvation, they didn't have no Jesus, they didn't know him. So they're cast out. How many of y'all know you're cast in? <laughs> Amen. You're the ones that are cast in. You're not cast out. You're not cast upon. You're cast in. You're in God's care. You're in God's family. If you have accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. He clothed me with the garments of salvation. He have covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself or with ornaments. And the bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth to all nations. Now I want you to see this. When God clothes you, He makes you beautiful again. Right? The very first sermon I gave here as pastor was the story of three hags. I don't know if you all remember that. The story of three hags. And they were all crippled and they had warts and didn't have teeth. They just had a tooth stuck straight out. They had all these, they just looked horrible. And they just, they ate out of garbage cans and they went their whole life and they, they uh, were making their way to the celestial city because they found the ticket that the great prince left, you know, all who, to, to the bear upon the man. Remember the great prince wrote this letter? To the bear upon the man shall be given unto them the desires of their heart. So off to the celestial city. They got an accident. They got a paper that's going to get in there and get them into heaven. And finally, they get to the celestial city. The great king asked the first one, what do you want? Oh, I want a, I want a, a city on the, on the hill. That's what I want. I want a mansion on the hillside. Oh, you got to live among us. All right, give her what she wanted. You know, the son was there and said, Father, she believed in me. She believed in me and she trusted me. Give, would you give her what she asked for? All right, for you, son, I'll do anything. The father said, gave her the mountain on, on there. The second one came in and said, well, what do you want? Well, I want to live in your house. What? You want to live in my house, right? He goes, no way. And, uh, all right. and, and the son stood up again and said, but dad, she, she trusted in my word. She believed me. She trusted in my word. Oh, all right, son, all right, son, I'll do it. Take her, clean her up, give her a room. She can live in the house. And the third one said, um, well, what do you want? And she said, um, your son, is he married? <laughs> and he's like, no, no. <laughs> and uh, the father screamed, no, no. You know, you're not going to marry my son. You think you're good enough to marry my son? 
And the son stood up and said, Father, I'll marry her. I'll, I'll, I'll marry her. And the father said, Son, you realize what that means? Do you know what that means? And she said, I, I do. I do. I'll, I'll marry her. So they said, okay, go and clean her up. So they went and they threw her in this pond, and when she came out, she was just beautiful. Just, just totally changed. Remember the story? She just had these beautiful long garments on. She looked and seen herself in the mirror, and she spent the whole night just gazing at herself. She was so beautiful, and, and just a change. That's you. That's every one of you. Oh, all of the sins, all the things that turned us away, that made us stink, because we've been living life in a garbage can. All the things that the devil has put in our lives, we've been eating out of it and feasting on it time after time after time. We're the ones that are all nasty and scaled over and had the warps and the tooth and all things. That's what it was. But when God's righteousness covers us, Woo! We look like a bride waiting for her groom. Amen? Amen? We look like that. He's cleaned up every part of us, and our, and our righteousness is the righteousness of the Son. I don't stink no more. I don't smell no more. And I'm not going back to the garbage can, right, when I got a dinner table sitting right in front of me. Amen? When I got a dinner table sitting right in front of me. Time flies when you walk through these doors. Amen? They do. Um, boy, I hate to... I, I, I hate to keep you guys much longer. I, I, I know I didn't really go real long yet today, because, but we talked so much about Pastor Appreciation Day. Uh, I don't want to keep you much longer. Um, we can finish this next week. Um, I want you to, to keep in mind with all these things that we're talking about with the feast, and we're going to go to Numbers chapter 10, and we're going to talk about the blowing of the trumpets. We've done that before, and that, but by, by next week, uh, we're going to make our way to atonement because these feasts mean something. I want you to know that the Feast of Tabernacles is coming up. It's going to start Wednesday, and that's all about, church, dwelling with God. When the new kingdom comes down. We're living in tents right now. Right? Amen. We're living in tents right now. We're living in the garbage can. We're living in the dirt. But when the new Jerusalem shows up, come on. Amen. Right? Amen. Living got good. Amen? Amen? Did everybody get something today? Amen. Everyone get something. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I just pray your spirit to... Fill us, Lord, to move us. Lord, I pray for my sister in Jesus' name. Lord, again, again, let the doctor be steady. But Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, healing over her body, and I rebuke that pain. Lord, that she can get out of the bed. Lord, that she can run through a troop like the Bible says. The Bible says she can leap over a wall. Lord, that she can do that without even a run and start. I pray, Lord God, that we have safety in the journeys. Lord God, we travel up and down the roads, healing for our bodies, Lord. Strength to our spirit, Lord God, that you lead each one of us, Lord God, when times get tough, when times get rough, that you lead us by the still waters, Lord God. And you feed us there. You care for us there. You protect us there. And Father, we won't stop ceasing to praise you, glorifying your name, Help us to be the salt and light wherever we go, Lord God. Help us to feed our families, the ones we love the most, the Word of God. Mm. We thank you and praise you for all things, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.